everyone doing? Are you ready for more? So first, I want to give you a Christmas gift. Kubernetes 113 was just released last week, and I would like to invite the release team and everyone who has contributed, please stand up. And let's give them a big round of applause and thank them for their contributions. Thank you all. So today, I'm not going into details of every new features covered in this release. Instead, I would like to start by first taking a look at how popular Kubernetes is today. So this graph visualizes how many searches have been done globally for Kubernetes since its beginning in 2014. As you can see, Kubernetes is clearly trending and has grown exponentially. So I started contributing to Kubernetes in mid 2015. And I still remember my first commit to Kubernetes GitHub repository. So because I joined the project during code freeze, and code freeze is the time that you cannot check in any code un unless it's a critical bug fix that will unblock the release. So my first commit is to fix the documentation. And I still remember during that time, I had to explain to everyone what Kubernetes is and even how to spell Kubernetes. And shortly after I joined, Kubernetes 1.0 was released and CNCF was formed. And that's all before the first KubeCon. During the early days, we focused a lot on moving fast and building new features. And at the time, Kubernetes was only adopted by a few risk-oriented innovators that strongly believes in Kubernetes. And then, thanks to their feedback and contributions, Kubernetes has been improved a lot. Then we started focusing more on scalability so that it can run more workloads on Kubernetes. And we start simplifying Kubernetes user experience so it becomes very simple to create a Kubernetes cluster. And then we start getting early adopters and more enterprise users are running Kubernetes in production. And we keep hearing more success stories from end users and how they use Kubernetes to reduce their operating cost and be able to deploy and run their applications more efficiently. And because of Kubernetes' significant impact on soft how software is being written and how applications are built. This happened. Ta-da! This year, Kubernetes won the open source most impact award. And I feel so proud to be a part of it when I saw the news. And did you know that according to a recent CNCF survey, the majority of the respondents are already running Kubernetes in production. And 40% of them are from enterprise companies. So it is very clear that Kubernetes has transitioned from early market of early adopters to mainstream market of early majority users. These early majority users have very different expectations from early adopters. They, the early majority users, they don't want to learn all the ins and outs of Kubernetes, all those details. They want Kubernetes to just work so that they can focus on what they actually care about, which is react to market conditions faster and deliver their business values. And the good news is that Kubernetes is now getting so solid, so mature, and so great that it is now very, very 
boring. And don't get me wrong, boring is good. It means that lots of companies are already using it, and it just works. It's good for mainstream market users who want to focus on uh, more on delivering their business values instead of uh, spending their energy on operating Kubernetes. When I was preparing for this keynote, I looked at the, uh, the new features of the latest Kubernetes release. And what I found was that Kubernetes focused mainly on two things. The first is open standards, and the second is, is, is extensibility. Let's first take a look at open standards. Standard allows developers to have expectations around the behavior of a system and how their applications will run. Kubernetes provides a set of built-in API, standard built-in APIs, so that those APIs provides a convenient layer over infrastructure so that you can run Kubernetes in all sorts of different environments. You can run it in hybrid, in multi-cloud, or even at the edge. For example, I recently read a, a blog post from Chick-fil-A. If you don't know what Chick-fil-A is, it's a, an American um, fast food restaurant chain. And in this article, they described how they um, run Kubernetes at the edge in every of their 2,000 restaurants. And that's amazing, and I recommend you to go ahead and read that blog post. And this is just one example. And in this conference, you can also hear how people run their uh, Kubernetes in every different environment. And the de next standard is conformance. So you want your workloads to run anywhere, but how can you be sure that you will uh, be deployed correctly on a given Kubernetes implementation? So with conformance, you don't need to test your applications against every Kubernetes environment. When you see this certified Kubernetes logo, you can be confident that you will get the required built-in APIs and you'll get consistent behavior. So with open standards, you can be confident that you can run your workloads across different Kubernetes environments and you will get consistent behavior. So we just talked about open standards. Now let's take a look at extensibility. So Kubernetes is extensible. It takes future uh, growth into consideration and you can build distributed platforms that suit your business needs. And extensibility has two parts, the infrastructure extensibility and the API extensibility. So infrastructure extensibility enables you to customize Kubernetes, how Kubernetes consumes the underlying infrastructure. For example, you can configure your Kubernetes to leverage different cloud providers. You can also use different um, plugins, for example, different network plugins, different um, container runtimes, or different storage plugins. And those plugins are standardized by the plugin APIs. And for example, the, uh, uh, the container storage interface, the CSI, the container runtime interface, CRI, and container network interface, CNI. And those um, standardized plugin APIs makes, uh, eliminates the barriers to entry for new service providers, and that help build a healthier ecosystem. And another extensibility is API extensibility. So we just talked about Kubernetes built-in API, and it is very generic, and it covers about 80% of use cases. But what about the rest 20%? What if you need to customize so with Kubernetes uh, API extensibility, you are empowered to create your own custom APIs, and you can build your own custom controllers 
that automates the underlying tasks. What's more, you can add your own API policy so that you can make changes to your API resources, and then you can do some validations on them. One example use of that is Istio. You can uh, deploy Istio on Kubernetes, and um, Istio uses the API extensibility to create Istio-specific API resource. For example, there's an API resource called virtual service, you can use that to configure the roles to route the uh, per, a percentage of uh, traffic to one service or to another. And also, Istio also used the API policy for uh, injecting sidecar containers to your pod and for doing some validations for Istio configuration checks. Today, there are already more than a thousand GitHub projects that are using API extensibility, including, and we start seeing more interesting uses of API extensibility. For example, um, you can see those uses for running machine learning workloads, for monitoring, and for managing uh, databases, or even for running uh, for managing resources outside of Kubernetes clusters. So with API extensibility, you can manage everything in Kubernetes way, and everything can be built in Kubernetes way. You can use a single config language to, for all your op open software and your in-house software. So to recap, Kubernetes open standards and extensibility makes it a ubiquitous platform for building your platform. You can have a set of standard, uh, standardized abstractions that makes your applications portable across different environments, and you will get consistent behavior because of conformance. Kubernetes extensibility allows you to customize Kubernetes however you want, and Kubernetes is open and compatible, so you are free to choose whatever solutions that best suit your needs. You can use Kubernetes API to manage everything, and everything can, build, can be built in Kubernetes way. And you can even manage things outside of Kubernetes clusters. Finally, Kubernetes is boring. And boring is necessary because you need it to be boring, to be a mature platform for you to depend on and build upon. Thank you.